back to Twin Cherry Studio and a few years ago I made this video basically on macOS gaming and just how bad it was back then. The ports were terrible, the control support was terrible and it just wasn't a nice place to be in Mac gaming. And although my hairline hasn't got any better, Mac gaming itself has got better thanks to improvements like the Game Porting Toolkit, which is a toolkit provided by Apple to help people port their games over from Windows using DirectX 12 to Apple's Metal Integrated API. And as you can see, there's lots of experiments. I'm going to be doing a deep dive on this myself, but somebody got Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game that I've been looking forward to playing for a long time, but because I don't have a PlayStation 5 or a gaming PC, I'm not going to be able to play it, but I might be able to play it on my new M3 Pro Mac. And also, we've got the introduction of the Apple Arcade, which I'm hoping they're going to be adding a lot more computer-based games. As you can see, the Mac, any games that are available on here, you can play them on your Mac. And they do have some good games on the Apple Arcade. Uh, one of the ones I've seen was this... Not this one. One of the games that I've seen was this Cypher 007, which looks very good on the Apple Arcade. And if you go to the Apple App Store, they've got a big get with Resident Evil 4 Remake and Resident Evil Village and Capcom. They've also got Stray. They've got a couple of nice games coming out for Mac OS. And with the Game Point 2 kit, Apple is hoping that a lot more developers are going to be porting their games over to Mac. And... Honestly, I really hope that that is the case in the future. But one of the problems I used to have with macOS gaming was this, the controller support. This being a Microsoft product and Apple being the usual like way they are with being closed off, you had to, you had to download third party software to get this running on a Mac and it, there was a bunch of input lag, it wasn't very good. Whereas now it actually runs natively on Mac OS and it's very easy to set up. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Even Mac, even on the Apple website themselves, they are now selling the PlayStation Dual Sense wireless controller and the Nintendo stuff also has like native support. So I'm just gonna see if, if this has native support in Mac OS. And we're gonna go through that today and show you all the different settings and stuff that you can do on your Mac because I've already done this for my phone. I might as well do it for my Mac as well. So the first thing you're going to want to be doing if you want to be connecting up a controller is you're going to want to open your settings, your system settings, and go to the Bluetooth section here. And then all you do on your Xbox controller is you just hold the sync button down, which will start flashing. This only works on the Xbox Series S and X controllers, and it also only works on the old school Xbox One S controllers as well. Xbox One controllers, the old school ones will not work, but as you can see on the screen here, when I held it down, it has Xbox wireless controller to pair. If I click connect, and that is it. It is absolutely connected. There's nothing else to do. Everything here is just going to work natively, which is amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, this used to require lots of different software. Now, if you go on the now, if you want to make some changes to the button layouts or things like that, you can scroll down in your settings, and there'll be this game controller section. You can click identify to make it rumble, and then you can add controller profiles as well. So if you click add and put a new profile, let's just call this uh, Nintendo setup because this is how the Nintendo buttons work. A is uh, a and B are the opposite way around, so you can change it so that the A button is the B button, the B button is the A button. If you're playing Nintendo games, uh, or if that's what you're used to, you can move them around. You can change the level of the haptic feedback, if your controller supports haptic feedback. I can also change what the share button does as well. Click done, and you have a new profile there as well. So if you go into the Xbox controller, change it to the Nintendo one, it'll change it to that, or you can change it to the default one as well. So let's take a look at the Joy-Cons. So once again, we're going into the Bluetooth section of the settings, and then we'll click on the sync button on my Joy-Con, the little sync button there, click and hold till it starts uh, syncing up. And there is Joy-Con left, we'll click that. That's connected to Joy-Con left, and I'll do just do the same for my Joy-Con right as well. That should pop up in nearby devices. I can connect that. And now left and right are connected as two separate controllers. But if we go down to the game controller section, you'll be able to see that the Joy-Cons are connected 
as one single controller, which is amazing. Currently says that they have zero battery, so that I'm guessing that's Currently says they have zero battery, but I'm guessing that's just because they can't get a read of the battery. These are Nintendo official ones, so I'm guessing that doesn't connect here. And just same with the Xbox One, you can change the buttons around however you want. Uh, I think the A button is actually the B button on here, so you'll have to switch that around on games that you're playing for Nintendo. And also, I have the Nintendo Switch Splatoon Pro Controller, so I'm going to try and connect that. So I'm just going to hold down the sync button. And there you can see it's popped up Pro Controller. I'm going to connect to that. There's also a 4K TV around. I could connect to that and uh, start some mess with my neighbours. But there we go, Pro Controller is connected. And it has the same basic. And for some reason, Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo devices are all connecting as Beats product. But they still have game controller settings. So it does say that it is a, cro a controller. It is a game controller. If I identify it, it does a little... Uh, Again, there's three controllers, as I, I'll hook up all three of them now. So if I go to my Joy-Con, left is a Beats Solo 3, which is weird. And uh, I guess that's a bug that Apple currently has at the minute. And then the Joy-Con right is connected as a gamepad, which is also a little weird. But anyway, all of these controllers do hook up, including the recommended one by Apple, which is the PlayStation 5 controller, which I might... I'm considering going out and buying it like right this second because uh, I've always wanted to see. I, the PlayStation 5 controller is probably one of the best ones on the market as far as everyone's concerned. I've never used one. Uh, is it worth spending 70 quid just to play uh, GameCube games? <laughs> Which is what I'll most likely do is use it for emulation or other stuff like that. Will it be worth spending the 70 pounds just to play that? Or I'd probably use it with my phone as well uh, when I'm on planes and stuff. But Anyway, that's it. That's basically the video. Uh, just to let you know that Apple controller support is so much better on the MacBook. I'm going to be installing a couple of emulators onto this lovely new M3 Pro Mac that I've got. And be sure to wait for those videos. And I'm also going to take a look at the Game Porting Toolkit to try and get games like Final Fantasy VII and other Steam games that I've got working on the MacBook as well. And to test that out and see if the M3 Pro really is the gaming powerhouse uh, that MacBook, that Apple is claiming it will be. So hope you have a fantastic new year. Take care and don't do anything I want to do.